According to our customs as Fulani people, I, being the youngest, was the first to rise early in the morning. After waking up, I would take some wood to go start a fire for the cattle to keep the flies from bothering them. After that, I would go back and greet my parents. From there, I would carry the calabash to go milk the cows. When I finished milking the cows, I'd release the cows to go meet their mothers. From there, I prepared myself to go graze the cows because, according to our customs, it is the duty of every son to graze. Therefore, any boy who does not graze is a useless child according to our custom. That was my vocation. Right from childhood, I loved my father very much. As such, whatever my father did, I wanted to do it with him. When he prayed, I wanted to pray with him. I was determined in my heart to please my father and my God. A determination that grew as I became older. Baba, I'm so blessed to have a father like you. You've given me everything a son could ask from his father. But Baba, I have one request to ask of you, please. What is that request, my son? I wish to get a proper education. I'd like to attend an Arabic school to learn more about the Quran. If you agree, I hope you won't deny my request. Is there anything bothering you? No, Baba. Well, your request pleases me very much. As such, you will go to Bauchi to start school with Sheikh Ibrahim. Yes, Baba. May Allah help you. And may his peace guide you. Amen, Baba. Go and prepare yourself, okay? Yes, Baba. Thank right, you, Baba. Son. See you later, Baba. All right. I spent three years in Bauchi studying the Quran at the Sheikh's home. I was not the only one studying there. We were many. We learned the fundamentals of Islamic studies and life application. From there, I went to Gombe and spent two years learning more about Islam. It was in Gombe I understood how to interpret the Quran. I then spent two years in Meduguri, continuing with my studies of the Quran. By the time I got to Zaria, I was already reading and writing Arabic. I spent one year in Zaria to advance further in Islamic studies. At this time, I was 22 years old. So at that point, I began looking for a way to go to Saudi Arabia for yet more advanced studies. It was at this time that my father sent for me to come home. <laughs> my father thought it best that I stayed home while he looked for the means to send me to school in Saudi Arabia. But then, it occurred to him that it would be better for me to get married before leaving for another country. That is why I came back home and was not able to travel anymore. I spent a year at home during which time I resumed my vocation as a herdsman. I became the spiritual leader and teacher in our village. One day, after grazing the cattle, I returned home. We said our evening prayers. After we finished, we settled down to eat supper. We chatted as we ate, and then my father expressed his concern that I wasn't yet married. But in my heart, I felt it would be better for me to finish Islamic school in Saudi. 
and acquire more Islamic knowledge before getting married. What will happen to the wives betrothed to you? What do we do with them? Baba, you know I'm not married yet. Indeed. But isn't it Allah's will for a man to marry? Indeed, it's Allah's will. Now, are you not doubting Allah's will? No, Baba. I want to get to know Allah more intimately. That is the desire of my heart. Well, I do not blame you for your determination, my son. But Saudi is far away. And your mother? She is afraid that if you go, you will never return. Let's talk some more in the morning, all right? Help! 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 After that dream, I could not go back to sleep. I sat on my bed until daybreak. I thought about telling my father about the dream, but another thought came to me not to tell him. That morning, I did not go anywhere. I stayed at home to rest. In the evening, we said our evening prayers and then sat down to supper, chatting as we normally did, sharing all the experiences of the day. Later, everyone went to their rooms to sleep. I also went to my room to sleep. Immediately, I had a second dream. My son, what are you doing here? Ah, I don't know. Shall I take you home? My son, I love you. When I had the second dream, this dream did not scare me, and I did not sweat very much as with the first one. Immediately, a thought came to me. Who is this man who is saving me and trying to explain things to me? Another thought came to me that I should tell my father. I got up and explained the dream to him. He reacted quickly. 
Get yourself ready. We're going to the witch doctor. Baba, do you have cola nuts? Yes. Here's a cola. Here you go. Mm. Show it to me. Show it to me. Reveal it to me. Take one. Baba, your son is in the hands of witches. Really? They would have killed him in two days. How fortunate that you came. I'll deal with them. Do you see this? Yes. Rub it on his head. Okay. At night before he sleeps. Okay. And this one. Grind it. Use it as incense in this room at night. God willing, it will break up the dream and it will never return. It will never return? It will never return. Never. Good. Good. It's done. It's done? Yes. Thank you. We are grateful. Goodbye. Baba! Baba! What is it? I had another dream. What kind of dream? I dreamt I was about to walk into a big hole when evil spirit appeared to me, Baba. One of them had fangs and long claws. And he told me if I didn't jump into the hole, a lion would kill me. As I was about to jump into the hole, the man in white appeared. The man in white? Yes, the one who helped me in that other dream. What did he do for you? He asked me if I was going home. I said yes. Then he asked me if I wanted his help. Again, I said yes. Then he stretched his leg over the hole and the hole sealed up and he took me home. When he took me home, he told me he loved me and then he left. And the evil spirits? When they saw him, they disappeared. Go to sleep now. The dream is over. Baba, I am afraid. Ah, why are you afraid of just a dream, my son? Baba, this is more than a dream. Continue using the witch doctor's medicine. If the dream persists, we will go to Sokoto in the morning to see another witch doctor. Okay? Go and lie down. The following night, I had another dream. After that, I had dreams in succession. Six nights in a row. In these dreams, the man dressed in shining robes of white was standing and saving me in every way from the evil spirits. At the end of each dream, he would speak to me as he always did. He would say, I love you, my son. I love you, my son. I love you. It was then I realized that the man in the dream this same person was the man referred to as Prophet Isa, the one Christians call Jesus Christ. After that, I had the final dream. This was the seventh dream.
What are you reading, my son? I can't understand it. Do you want me to help you? Yes, help me. Mohammed, this book is from God. It contains his word. These verses are all the words of God. Come to me, all of you who are troubled and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am humble of heart, and in me you will find rest. Have you ever heard of the way, the truth, and the life? I've never heard. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Who are you? You know me as the prophet Isa. I have come to give you eternal life. If you accept me as your Lord and Savior, you will become a child of God. Does God have children? God's children are born from His Spirit, not from the flesh. Do you believe in God? Yes, I believe in God. Believe also in me. In this world you will have many trials. But rejoice, I have overcome the world. Would you like to receive me? Yes, I will receive you. When I awoke early in the morning, I decided to visit a Christian man in a neighboring village. This man was Jonathan. I wanted to share my concern with him because he was a good man and I felt in my heart that I could trust him. I shared my burdens with him. Jonathan listened to everything I said. From there we went to a man, a preacher in Bauchi. Jonathan brought this man to his village and left him there. This man frequented Jonathan's village every Sunday to preach in their churches. As I was saying earlier, Pastor, I will go and get Muhammad, and together we'll meet you here. Okay. Greetings, Pastor. Ah, Jonathan. Yes. You are back. Yes. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I'm here with Mohammed. Come on, Mohammed. Mr. Mohammed, you're welcome. Greetings, Pastor. Mohammed, welcome. Your friend Jonathan has told me about all your dreams, but I'll be glad to hear you tell me all about them in your own words. Indeed, Pastor, I've had some very frightening dreams. Some people dressed in black, they have... I've been tormenting me in my dreams. But there is a man, always dressed in white robes, who says he's Isa. He is the way and the truth, and there is no other way except through him. He also asked me to accept him. I told the preacher about the things that happened to me in my dream. Immediately, he urged me not to waste any more time, but to agree to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. At this moment, will you accept the invitation that he made to you to accept him? Then, let me lead you in a very short prayer. And this will become the source of your peace. Say, I, Muhammad, 
I, Muhammad, receive Jesus, receive Jesus to become my Lord and to Savior. My Lord and Savior. They led me through a simple prayer, and I repented of my sins. I received Jesus Christ, and he became my Savior and Lord. As soon as I opened my eyes, I felt a joy and peace that I had never had before. Suddenly, all my fears and anxieties were gone out of my heart. All I had was joy and peace in my heart. I immediately felt the Spirit of God prodding me to go home and tell my parents what I got. That is the grace of God in my life. Now I must be dreaming. My son a Christian? Uh, my Muslim son an infidel? Really? Someone please wake me up. I will not sit here. Allahu Akbar. Allah. After one week, my father summoned me to find out what had happened to me because he noticed that I was reading the Bible and that I no longer attended the mosque. Such a thing has never happened in this family before, and it will never happen again. Now, I'm giving you two options. Deny Jesus or leave this house forever. You are my father, and I love and honor you very much, Baba. I will never do anything to break your heart. But then, I will continue in what I know is the truth. I will continue being a Christian until Jesus comes to show me where to go. When my father saw that I was determined in my cause, he incited all my relatives to treat me as a pariah. Come out here. Days turned to many months. Take this and drink. Baba, will you really give me poison to drink? Hey, just drink it. I need to ask you a favor. What is it? Allow me to pray. No. Well, if you want to pray, go ahead. That does not concern me. Just drink it. Oh, Lord Jesus, I am drinking this poison because of you. My life is in your hands. Go and lie down. My father and relatives conferred together. They agreed that once I had died, Keep they would throw my body into a river. They were all waiting for me to die. But I went in and continued to sleep. But later, I woke up. I felt like throwing up, so I ran outside and vomited. Then, I went back to my room and slept comfortably. The next morning, very early, I was the first to greet my father. Seeing this, my father was very sad that I had not died. He immediately filed the report with the Islamic community. He wanted the Christian who converted me arrested. At once, the chief magistrate passed a verdict saying, the most gracious thing to do was to catch me and shoot me with a gun to kill me. 
everyone knows the decisions that have been made over my son. He is allowed to spend the night. When my father returned that night, he gathered all our relatives. He made a firm decision that I must be banished in the morning. He also wanted to make sure of one thing. I want you to go to that forest and make sure you stop him. Do you hear me? Put an end to him. Okay, Baba. Go and live with the people that you like. As for me, you will never live with me, ever. Go. Go. Give me those trousers and shoes. Leave. Let us go. The attack from my king's men was swift and unexpected. Then I fell to the ground, writhing in pain from the arrow that hit me. I was in so much pain that I nearly passed out. After that, I thought in my heart that I needed to remove the arrow from my buttocks because there was poison in the arrow. If I left it in, it would kill me. So I thought it best to remove it. When I removed it, I lay on the ground and the blood was oozing. God sent me a servant of God from Jonathan's village. He was on his way hunting near my house. The man that saw me was familiar with my story. He knew about the problem between me and my parents and my entire family. The man tried to pick me up and take me to a major roadside. He took me to the roadside and kept me there. And as soon as he took me to the roadside, God helped me by sending a man in a car. He took me to an expensive hospital called Rimi Clinic. It was there I was operated on. The people from Jonathan's village, the Christians, put funds together and paid my hospital bills. I convalesced there for a month. From there, I went to Jonathan's village. I spent a year and a half there. It's there also that my father found out where I was. He reported this to the Islamic court. I spent six months in prison, and then, in the seventh month, I was released to a police escort who took me home. As soon as I got home, my father, gathered all our relatives and encouraged them to take good care of me and treat me very well. 
so that I would forget about being a Christian. Not only that, as a reward for leaving Christ, he promised to give me a hundred cows and pay the bride price for three wives. He also encouraged me to forget about the past. For seven months after my return, I cared for the cattle. My relatives thought that things were back to normal and that I had no problems. But I knew in my heart that my fate was slowly dying. I realized that my father and relatives were trying to separate me from my God and I realized I had not made a firm declaration. Come in. Good morning, Baba. Good morning. Sit over there. I'd like to talk to you about your fiancé. I have finished all the preparations. Baba, I want to thank you for all you have done for me in my life. But I need you to really do one more thing for me. Tell me your need. I'll do it for you. Baba, I will tell you. But this is a need only Jesus can meet. What can Jesus give you that I cannot give you? Tell me one thing. Baba, can you give me eternal life? No, I can't. Baba, since you cannot give me eternal life, there is no way I can leave Jesus. After I left my father's house, I went to Jaws. I lived there for two years. During this period, I had no desire to communicate with anyone in my family. I did not want to relate with them. But then, I received a message. My father wanted to see me because he was sick in the hospital. Baba. My son. Did you send for me? Forgive me, my son. I should forgive you, Baba. I did many wrong things to you in ignorance, and you uttered no word. Baba, I forgive you a very long time ago. But I never asked for forgiveness from you. The Bible teaches us to always forgive. Hold on to this God of yours with all your might, my son. He can be your God also. Baba. My God, I don't understand. What don't you understand, Baba? Do you think he will accept me after all my sins? He is a God of love. There is only one thing he requires. What does it cost? No, Baba. It's a gift. What kind of gift is this? It's a gift through Jesus Christ. Accept him and he will become your savior. He will give you eternal life. 
Will you accept him? I would love to receive such a gift. Baba, let us pray. Okay. Say this after me. Okay. Oh, Jesus, I come to you. Oh, Jesus, I come to you. I come before you to forgive my sins. I come before you to forgive my sins. I want you to become my Lord and Savior. I want you to become my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Amen. Now, let me pray for your healing. Don't pray for my healing, my son. Why not, Baba? God is the one who heals us. I don't want to be healed, my son. Right now, I am ready to go home and meet Jesus. After we prayed, three hours later, my father died. At his death, he was full of peace and joy. My father knew where he was going. He was with Jesus. Our reconciliation made up for all the pains of the past. God washed them all away. And how about you, my friend? Are you ready to have your sins forgiven? God is a God of comfort and hope, a faithful God, a God of truth and righteousness. God is the way, he is the truth, and it is through him we gain everlasting life. Prepare yourself to receive him. Let him become your God and Savior. Are you ready, my friend, at this time to repent and receive him as your Lord and Savior? He is ready, and he is waiting. Call upon him now. He will meet all your needs. He will make you victorious in life.